Tonight's opening begins with Stone Angel Brewing's Red-Handed Irish Red Ale. They describe it as a medium-bodied malt-focused beer with initial sweetness balanced with subtle toasted green and caramel notes, which finishes with a roasted dryness and a slight hop bitterness. Let the games begin. First item in does not have... Oh, no, it says headphone jack on it. Okay. Let's just see what it really is. This is simply two uh, quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter adapters. Basically a headphone adapter to adapt uh, from what I find on my guitar amp or my audio interface to standard earbuds or the you know more modern headphones. Nothing too fancy. I just needed a couple of them and I figured I'd get some cheap online. One piece, one eighth or 3.5 millimeter female to 6.5 millimeter quarter hit male headphone jack adapter plug uh, whatever. Um, these came from Tang Tang 2, and uh, I ordered two of them. Currently, they seem to be selling for two seventy seven dollars a piece. But back when I ordered them, I got the pair of them for two ninety dollars with free shipping. So, wow, the price has essentially doubled on them. That's, uh, wow. Anyway, there's not a lot to say about them. They're just a straight-up adapter... They're gold colored. I don't know if it's actually gold. I would be shocked if it was. Let's see if item number two is much more interesting. This calls itself Terminals. And again, shipment from odd places. This particular package is, was shipped from uh, UAE. So this is just two RJ45 uh, adapters, female to female adapters. And what they're for is just extending an RJ45 cable to make it longer. This is not ideal. It's not something you probably want to do under normal circumstances. But I didn't get it uh, for that. I got it to use with the cable tester, with the RJ45 cable tester that I got and reviewed a while back. I'll put a link to that up there if you uh, didn't see that one. Um, so that basically I can have a short cable just going from here to the adapter and leave that connected through an entire day of uh, work and then just plug cables in and out of there. The main reason being to save this one from wear and tear from being connected and disconnected all the time. It's a minor thing, but uh, I'd rather have these things wear out than the one that's on there that's going to be really hard to replace. Two pieces, RJ45 extender plug, network Ethernet LAN cable joiner coupler connectors. Got these for the princely sum of $1.73 for the pair of them with free shipping. And it appears that that is still the current price, which is excellent. Again, nothing super exciting about this. It's just an RJ45 female to female connector for extending cables. Not something you'd want to do with high speed cables or uh, for a production system, but it can get you out of a pinch occasionally. And as I said, it works good as a sacrificial test connector. Next in, we have modules. This one was shipped from Great Britain. Although, again, I doubt that I bought it from a British seller. It probably came from a Chinese seller that's drop shipping stuff. But let's just see. Hmm, it is a bunch of thing modules. Okay. This is five Arduino Nanos. Hmm, I, I know I was running low on these because they seem to just get to left in projects or stuck on breadboards and never... Uh, Never removed from them, so I decided to stock up. Five pieces, Nano version 3.0, mini USB, 18 mega, 328, 5 volt, 16 meg, microcontroller board, Arduino. I got these from GC Electronics underscore US. Hmm. Even though they're actually in China and they shipped from the UK. All right. Uh, currently they're selling them for 3233 Canadian for the five of them plus 322 Canadian shipping or $25 American and shipping which works with about five bucks a piece which isn't too bad back when I bought them they were a little bit less money but with the shipping it comes out to about what they cost right now so I don't know it it was uh the best price I could find at the time for them and I know people are going to say, oh, why don't you just use uh, ESP32 or ESP266? I like these. They're cheap. They're versatile. 
I don't need Wi-Fi for most things. These things are relatively low power compared to that. And they've got a stack of uh, analog inputs on them, which none of the uh, ESP modules do, unless you put an external uh, analog to digital converter on them. And I tend to like analog stuff. So there you go. The fourth thing in, it says plastic sheet. Woohoo! Wonder what plastic sheet is this time. There's two of them, and they're plastic. One's black and one's blue. Okay. Oh, I think I remember what these are. Yeah, I remember ordering these. These are cheap little, they call them drawing tablets. You can just make little notes on there. And apparently you can use that button to electronically erase them. So for this one, doesn't seem to want to electronically erase. Yeah, okay. So I'm assuming there's a battery in there. Yeah, there he is. All right. Maybe before I pry that other one open, let's see if this one works any better. If I can draw on it and I can race it. Okay. We'll use this one for the demo and we'll use the other one for the inevitable teardown. So you can write on it with pretty much anything, the stylus included or fingernail or whatever. And then when you push the erase button, it just magically erases it. And you write on it with your finger again. And push the erase button and it erases. I don't really know how these work. I remember they were sort of the new popular thing with uh, with kids and stuff a while ago and they were ridiculously expensive back then but obviously I found a cheap source of them because I ended up with two of them and uh, yeah I'll, I'll worry about why that one's not working later when I tear them apart or tear this one apart because that's the main reason I bought them just because I was really curious about them. First thing I noticed about these is the price has changed significantly since I bought them. These are 4.5 inch electronic digital LCD writing tablet DIY drawing board memo pad stylus kids. Yes, for kids. Available in a variety of colors from TX Hang Module, who seems to be also GNC. Interesting. I don't understand how these Chinese companies work. Currently they're selling them for 507 American or 648 Canadian with a bunch of shipping. Back when I bought them, they were $3.99 American each without shipping. So things have changed again. Not a huge amount of information down here. It says that it is an LCD panel. It says it has built-in button battery. Yes, it does. It says it's made out of ABS. Well, some kind of plastic anyway. So I figured that I would grab a couple of these, one to tear down and... If it's any use at all for making random notes or whatever, then maybe just use the other one. Or maybe it's hackable. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out in the future. And the last item in, you may have recognized the bright orange packaging as coming from Banggood. Which means this is a sponsored item that they sent me for review. As I have mentioned in the past, as long as these companies are willing to uh, keep selling me, or sending me tools, not selling, sending me tools to stock up my shop, I am going to continue taking advantage of that. The tools that I'm getting from them are not the absolute top of the line. They are still hobbyist affordable. And in this case, it is a Unity Professional Thermal Imager UTI-690A. It's a thermal imaging camera. This is another one of those, I've always kind of wanted one, but I've never really wanted to pull the price, pull the uh, trigger on buying one. So the manual is, uh-oh, is it more than just, okay, it's Chinese and English, good. So I will be able to read it. Okay. Uh, what do we got for accessories? We have a USB cable, USB-C, relatively modern piece of equipment. We have a 16 gig micro SD card. That's kind of nice. No name brand, don't know what it is. We have, what else do we have in here? A wrist strap. And then the tool itself. It's got a pretty good weight to it actually. Uh, where does that USB cable plug into it? Oh, up there, okay. USB cable and the SD card goes into it up there. Uh, let's see if it's, it's charged up. It is charged, okay. So we just turned it on and it's telling me that the center of my sign, the sign over here is about 29 or 30 degrees, 32 degrees. 
assuming that's the crosshairs, right? Or is that, oh no, that's probably this little thing here, not the bouncing around crosshairs. The bouncing around crosshairs is telling me what the hottest spot is. So if I overlap them, yeah, 31.1. Okay. And for reference, my beer is 9.5 degrees Celsius right now. It says it's good between minus 20 and up to 400 degrees Celsius. So I won't be able to use it for a lot of stuff outdoors in the winter here in Canada, but for any indoor stuff, uh, it should be fine. I think where this might come in handy is finding hot spots on circuit boards, uh, finding components that are drawing excess current and things like that. That's probably the first place I'm going to be using it. Well, I might just wander around the house and point it at the windows and doors and things and see if there's any obvious uh, weather leaks too. Various different options. But stay tuned, I will be doing a more in-depth review of this, as I said, after I've lived with it for a little while. Unity UTI 690A, uh, 120 by 90, assuming that's the screen resolution, infrared thermal imager, minus 20 to 400 degrees Celsius, PC software analysis, industrial thermal imaging camera, handheld USB infrared thermometer. Well, that's a mouthful. Um, this thing is currently selling for 173 American, uh, normally when it's not on sale, it's $219, which for this class of device is fairly reasonable. The, uh, the actual professional grade ones, the really high end ones, um, are well over twice that. So in the pictures, they show it working with laptop software. Um, not quite sure about that. I'll have to check. Maybe it's on that SD card that they included. So that's all the same as we've already seen. Temperature measurement mode, center point, high and low temperature tracking. It has temperature alarms that you can set with a buzzer or a flashing LED. It has a laser. Yes, it does. Three protection designs. It calls itself IP54 and it says it's good for up to two meters of fall. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to test that one or not. Use time on battery, I assume, not less than nine hours, 3.7 volt, 2600 milliamp hour rechargeable lithium battery. It is a quarter inch tripod screw hole on the bottom. Yes, it does. There are all the specs, which I am not going to read because reading specs is boring. You can freeze frame it or just click on the link below. There's a good use case. That looks like three phase uh, cabling going into a circuit breaker or a breaker panel. That would be a good use case, actually, just making sure that uh, all of your connections are still tight and are not going resistive on you. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. Bit of a variety again, as usual. Some basic things, some utilitarian things, and some really interesting things. The shipping times. The mini tablets took 25 days. The nanos took 20 days. Uh, the quarter inch adapters took 34 days. These RG45 couplers took 29 days. So these will just be you know, general purpose use. Nothing too special there. The nanos, you always use those. Uh, good shop stock. These things will be a teardown at some point in the future. And this, once I've had a chance to live with it for a few weeks and experiment with it and figure it all out, is going to be its own review sometime in the next month or so. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, thank you to, oh man, my channel members, my Patreon supporters. Thanks to Banggood for sending me that. Yeah. And just thanks to all of you guys for watching as usual. I hope you found that entertaining, informative, interesting, useful, good waste of time. I don't know. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.